Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Ivor Chester at IvorChester.com. I'm the Had Enough guy at Facebook Had Enough. Thanks for tuning in. I'm the Balance Coach, and uh, today we're going to be talking about an over-talked topic, but because we're still not getting it, myself included, and a lot of people <clears throat> who uh, are dealing with it, uh, we're going to continue to on the subject, and we're going to be talking about changes. It was big for David Bowie. It's going to be big for us all. We are in a world that if you're healthy, you're changing. You're in a world where even if you're not changing, you the things around you are. And if you, uh, if you properly handle these things, if you properly process these moments, you will not be threatened by them. You will not be left behind by them. Because again, if you don't change, you just get left behind by friends, by some family members, by people who really matter, okay? Now, there's a way to not be traumatized by change because uh, when you're suffering with a diagnosis, when you're suffering with alcohol, uh, with an addiction issues, that these stunt people's growth. And by the way, if you're in a family where you have a family member who is dealing with one of these issues, again, alcohol, drugs, an addiction issue, a depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, whatever the regular suspects are, you have a family member that's dealing with those things, then it can dearly affect the entire family dynamics and their growth as well. That's why healthy people, healthy people see the changes coming and they adapt, process, and move on. So I encourage people to please ride these waves appropriately. Now, I get it. I'm 60, okay? The America I was born in is not really here anymore. Now, I'm not here to take a political stance. That's not my, my point here. But understand, where I was born was Houston, Texas. And uh, the neighborhood I grew up in, everybody had their own little plot of land. You know, they, they, uh, the house, the fine trim lawns, the, the trees that we all could climb in. It seems like all the moms were pregnant all the time. <laughs> And uh, if you did anything wrong with any of the local or neighborhood kids, uh, another mom had the authority to, to stick her head out the uh, door. Hi, Gary. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. They, uh, they had the authority to stick their head out the door and go, John Ivor, I'm watching you. I'm going to call your mom. I know she's home. And she would do that. Well, that's the neighborhood I grew up in, but that neighborhood doesn't even exist anymore. America changed. For the better or worse, I'm not going to get into. I think there's a lot of aspects America has changed for the better. And there's some things we need to work on. But that's also a personal reflection as well. People who uh, adapt to the changes that, one, happen to them, remain healthy. They remain social. They develop these social handles that allow you to hook on with other people. However, the real true way to uh, manage changes is to be a catalyst for change. That way you're not waiting for something to happen to you. You're somebody who makes it happen. If you don't like your neighborhood going to pot, then why don't you attend some kind of neighborhood meeting? Why don't you be in touch with the police? Why don't you get to know your neighbors? I had a neighbor that lives across the street. I told this recently, I had a, he lives across the street every Friday night. They would be playing their music really loud and I can hear the boom, boom right through my house. And you know what? Instead, I, I got sick and tired of making a fuss about it. So instead, I decided to go over there again. And instead of this time, instead of asking them, please turn your music down, I went over there and they looked at me and they, they opened up the ice chest and they said, you want one? And I sat down and I had a moment with them. And uh, you know what? They still play their music on Friday nights occasionally. But you know what? Now, it doesn't really bother me. Further, uh, when he needed help with a tree bringing it down, I went over there and helped him. When I was working in one of my cars, he showed up and he uh, helped me work on that. See, changes are going to happen, but when you're the catalyst for change, all of a sudden you stress less about what other people are doing and you're more laser beam focused on you. 
And that again goes for if you're trying to be a CEO of change in your company, trying to be somebody who's overcoming a diagnosis, somebody who's going to be a new dad or a new mom, somebody who has to take on their mom because their mom has some kind of uh, dementia or Alzheimer's. Whatever these changes that are wrought upon us, when we adapt to them and then start taking the lead, we become less followers, which is nothing wrong with being a follower because all leaders have phases of following. But then when you start taking the lead, you're going to bring other people with you. Remember, a rising tide lifts all boats. And you become a leader in your family, for your children, for your spouse, for maybe even your own parents. And that's all I really wanted to tell you about today. I could go on for a couple hours and, well, probably not. But I do want you to remember, don't be too wigged about changes. Don't be too scared of them. They're going to happen. Instead of seeing them as moments of trauma, see them as moments of opportunity where you can walk beside maybe even strangers and make them friends. Make them people who will be part of your tribe, people who are also searching as well to become agents of change. And that's all it really takes. I'm going to be changing how I'm doing my Facebook Lives. And instead of just doing them three days a week, I think I'm going to bump it up a little bit more, maybe to four or five. I'll let you know how that goes. We're going to be restarting here in another couple of weeks the um, local, uh, the local uh, workshops that we do here in Irving. And we'll be posting that information coming up soon here on my Facebook page as well as iverchester.com. You can get that. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, their usual suspects, and uh, feel free to drop a note here in the uh, comments section. I appreciate your time, I appreciate your prayers, and I look forward to being with you during this time. Thanks again for everything. We'll see you out there.